Greetings fellow scavengers, welcome back to Dusker's Daily Challenge for May 16th of 2020. I think that's how people uh, pronounce the date in um, American Standard. I have no idea because I am American and such. Um, anyways, so uh, because we're currently at Medical A with only one infestation type, medium cooling degree and stable age, Know what time it is? Well, not really. Anyways, I I haven't really uh, plan not uh, told my plans and such or something. So this is going to be my tutorial on how to do the Duskers daily thing. Uh, basically, this challenge, uh, uh, this Duskers daily challenge mode is basically the uh, game mode in Duskers where you get all the loot possible in the ship. Mm, like the scrap, the fuel, and possible uh, drone. If not disabled drone, then the destroyed one. You gotta get the um, the drone upgrades um, in that drone to get more extra points. In which I'm going to explain the scorecard later on as soon as I finish this uh, daily challenge uh, mission, basically. Mm, so we got overload. Overload is the ship upgrade that will. Well, basically, it overloads the electronics around the room you want. And so, basically, for example, you want to kill the sentry. So, the sentry has like 100 HP, right? So, if you place that sentry in the room with the electronics, like the terminal, fuel access, um, what else? Terminal, fuel access. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, generator, except we don't want to kill our generator drone because we don't have um, the power management to power the generator without uh, killing our drone basically so you don't want to do that big time um what else yeah uh, basically I think overload can be useful to kill the swarm quickly along with the sentry as well leaper and slime though they have a uh, leaper have something about 200 HP and that's also including slime as well I think mm, with 200 HP in each of the slime nodes basically <sighs> which is gonna be nasty if that's the case in this mission um what else stealth stealth all right for stealth okay first things first um usually people use drone one type of drone and just equip the interface in uh, their empty slot uh, at the start of the mission basically so Aaron will usually only have the generator Orson as the third drone will only have two but for uh, my personal reason uh, which is something about uh, quick swapping during during very very important circumstances I usually put it on Aaron for my generator drone and just simply uh, parking one of my drones here and not doing anything else except to just preserve their uh, HP and such oh uh, yeah so as I as I was saying people like to use Nathan type of, of drone uh, because yeah that's just um, well I mean, yeah, I don't have an excuse on why I prefer to use Orson type of drone other than, oops, other than it having um, the lowest drone HP compared to the other drones uh, most of the time. So basically, uh, talking about the drone HP uh, in this part, um, daily challenge have... Right, anyway. <laughs> Daily challenge um, has the lowest drone HP at 70, and uh, uh, basically the lower, the lowest drone HP in Duskers in general is 70. Uh, excuse me, um, and then it's going to randomly range up to 130 for the highest drone HP in the daily challenge. Uh, for the other uh, challenge type, you can. Um, upgrade your drone HP uh, maximum capacity by 10 
uh, with five scrap or something. It's it's a well, it, it's an entirely different uh, game mode or something. So I'm not gonna include it in here, unfortunately. Mm, yeah. So each day you will always get this uh, uh, five throne upgrades with uh, an explore explorer upgrade, uh, randomized like stealth, lure, sensor, or motion, in which the later gets pretty much despised because um, at some cases you will get um, some inconclusive results of the room you're going to check in like surrounding you or something so you gotta have to like rely on some other tricks like the door tricks basically about this uh, parking in the doorway trick it involves you about moving your parking your drone in the doorway until an infestation something like it's it's mostly uh, used against sleeper. Do not do not use this against swarm because swarm will immediately go to your drone as soon as as you open the door, uh, leading to your drone basically like the next room of it or something. Even in the doorway, don't ask about the doorway. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty much not recommended. Slime will always uh, pretty much grow. Well, I mean one slime room will always just grow around the room and will never go to the next room or something that's just that's been a common sense and in a slime room and in a slime mission in case this mission will only have slime only one infestation type right uh you will pretty much want yourself to bait a slime spawn where you basically find a room that ideally you can uh, fan with the airlock or kill with the ship defense um, basically just to not worry about slime timer anymore so basically you get this uh, mission timer right so every two minutes of interval there will be a chance a slime will spawn somewhere um, it can be in either your the room you're currently your drone is currently in. It can be in the other room your drone is currently not in. But um, and you haven't killed uh, the slime in that particular room, so it's like basically a it's called rogue slime basically. And the one the other one is where it spawns in a room that you already kill with either trap venting the room maybe or most likely when you kill the slime in the ship defense room uh, that's gonna uh, amp, amp up their percentage to respawn in that uh, safe room basically um, there's a percentage of that but I don't really recall that all right let me just uh, look at the discord real quick because um, I'm not really remembering the percentage in general but I can always uh, check the Discord for a bit. I'm not gonna see the <clears throat> see the n new messages and such. Mm, okay, so basically, this is the post from Deca Void, uh, the person who made the unofficial patch for Duskers. Um, so basically, slime will have a percentage of spawn as follows: forty percent room with a visible player drone which is either our drone 1, drone 2, or drone 3 in the room that we are currently in except room 1. Uh, slime never spawns at room 1. Mm, for a good reason, of course. No spawn if there are no rooms with drones, okay? 12% room with a visible player drone. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. 12% is a room without a visible player drone, or so what we like to call the, that particular rogue slime. 31.2% respawn slime in a room with that slime. No spawn if there are no rooms with that slime. Uh, as I mentioned before, it uh, that slime uh, you can get with either of probably venting the room. I never really uh, confirmed this fully. Either venting the room from the airlock, like popping up, popping the airlock open and close, so you can. Uh, Fend the slime and then uh, killing them with trap, uh, trap 
module basically you put the trap in that room and it will kill every single infestation in that room along with possibly breaking the electronics um, in that room like the fuel access terminals and even your generator so use that in use that by caution basically and also by killing your slime with the ship defense yeah I, I mentioned this quite a lot and then there is 16.8 percent where a slime with, will not spawn at all so it has a chance not to spawn at all even in a two minute uh, interval as I mentioned before um, rinse and repeat until you get all three spawns in this uh, one particular derelict basically and then you will be free from slime timer so you don't have to basically worry every two minutes in case you have to worry for the slime timer basically makes me wonder in some cases you can already hear some swarms buzzing around uh, nearby your ducking bay if the room is uh, pretty close with the, this room basically Man, I'm explaining enough, huh? I think we can start now, yeah. I'm gonna explain something about the fuel, the fan, and any other infestation uh, in this derelict, like possibly the tendency of an infestation to mostly move to the center of the room unless you do certain uh, trait, other trait, 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 oh god other treatments like um, closing the door that blocks the infestation padding or having your drone unspelled or something which is something I sadly am not gonna <laughs> do it here but uh, if we get shield I would like to do that and to demonstrate for you what kind of damage type that that infestation has for your drone basically this is a 12 minute of intro but I think this is gonna be a worth kind of thing so overall in daily challenge you get all the scraps the fuel and possibly the drone if it has one medical A is usually quite big of a ship and it might have two drones uh, this also occurs with um, other A type ships I think government A will sometimes have two as well oh yeah I forgot to mention about the type of ship as well huh um, along with the medium full integrity and stable edge. Okay, I will delay this uh, start again. Basically, there are four types of ship, I think. Medical, salvage, government, military. Oh, there's also a barge ship as well. Barge is known for having a lot of scrap capacity, something around... Uh, well, I mean, I'm talking about the barge A. I'm gonna drink a bit, hold on. A bit of a stick in the stomach for no reason. Anyways, um, okay, Barge A is known. Barge A and Salvage A. There are uh, four types of drone, uh, of uh, ship types as well. There's A, B, C, D. A is the bigger one. D is usually the lo uh, the smallest one or something. But it ranges if it's a Moteki ship. Oh, there's oh, oh, six apparently, huh? Wait, wait. Medical, Barge, Salvage, Moteki. Private military? Did I mention all six? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, that's uh, the size ranges between the, the classes, basically. Yeah, that's class A, B, C, D, and such. Um, usually in the daily challenge, you will only get something about uh, A class to B class uh, type of ship, ranging between those six uh, aforementioned uh, ship type. Yeah, the medical, the barge, and such and such. There are four infestation types in the maximum. Um, yeah, for the maximum, as you as you have seen in the yesterday's challenge, swarm, sentry, leaper, and slime. Slime, I have explained that. Um, I'm going to explain the other infestation later on I guess maybe in a separate video or something separate video or something oh, sorry but you can always check the steam guide if you feel like it as well but I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not really ex feeling to explain all types of them because I already explained the slime um, usually the medium uh, the whole integrity and 
chip age tends to pretty much um, kind of tie in or something. So uh, with stable ship age, it uh, the good uh, the whole integrity is either good or medium. But this time we get medium, so we will have to worry about radiation leak. Uh, radiation leak is caused from pipe bursts that will um, have a chance to occur every six minutes before twenty minutes. After twenty minutes, it tends to vary. Whether it's going to be in 23 minutes, 30 minutes, um, 26, I don't have, I don't have an exact um, um, mission type, mission time for that for that one sadly, but um, before 20 minutes, it has a chance to um, pretty much produce this eerie pipe creak in something about 550 if you're in your drone type. And 555 in your semantic view type, basically, and it's also going to occur in the turn type as well. That 555 pipe creek thing, and uh, excuse me. yeah, I think that's all I can say about that. So, in medium hole integrity, you will get that, and in poor hole integrity, you will usually get poor hole integrity in older ship age something like the zardus to fatal uh ship age and i think that range is about uh, 300 to 400 uh ship age yeah medical a usually doesn't have a lot of scrap capacity but in barge a and salvage a they will have uh pretty much something about 100 plus for the scrap capacity uh, this amount of scrap capacity can also be found at Muteki A and Private A. Military A will usually have something about um, it can reach between 50 to 70 ish for military A, but that's gonna be something that you need to be mindful of when it comes to uh, weekly challenge or campaigns. Uh, it's not gonna affect in uh, daily challenge because. You cannot comment in the daily challenge, so no extra points for completing, uh, for basically killing all the infestations in this, uh, this mission types, something like that. All right, I think we can start now. <laughs> That's something about uh, 18 minutes of uh, me explaining this thing. Let me check about the allies first. Usually, this is a begin. And this will usually navigate 1 and 2 because I usually use the third drone for my explore drone as a part of the self challenge. That's what you get in here. LO is usually for me to just uh, bring all my drones out in case I use sensor and then I have to check all the, uh, uh, the other airlocks in the ship. And then, yeah. You can check uh, my al alias in the video description. I'm not gonna explain all of them unfortunately, but if you have questions, you can always check the Discord or sure, feel free to comment on my video as well. I'm always welcome with them. Also, I uh, wasn't really thorough on uh, explaining about fans who are mechanic as well yesterday there's also the complete uh, comment made by Marvin in the discord so feel free to join all right now we can start I usually also use a desktop time I think that name is uh, X plate or something I forgot I forgot I've got uh, it's basically in front of me right now but it's not uh, captured by a bandicam so unfortunately you won't be able to see it right now but as soon as I type go, you can maybe set your own uh, mission, uh, your own timer, and then, uh, yeah, you can you can keep track on the time I'm having right now. Mm, instead of checking the time over and over because that's uh, usually kind of a bit of a I don't know, I, I just find that checking time in uh, uh, Well, this is much of a player's preference of course 
you will get pretty much still overwhelmed by uh, typing the time and still and such. So instead, I have my own timer in here. But again, it's a uh, player's preference. I used to have this phone as my uh, mission time, as my timer I'm in. But now I found the way to mm, to have the timer on me, like in front of me, so I can keep track on things and such. All right, three, two, one, start. This is the generator. Aaron will power it. Ooh, look at this, D twenty two. All right. So with stealth. You can always type stealth and your drone will get stealth and then get open open the other door. This is the drone that I'm talking about with a lot of things actually. I'm going to just bring my Nathan to get the tow. And then we're going to just proceed to the next room, providing this room is safe. And it is safe. I usually just Yeah. Just keep powering myself in. Alright, so this is the, int the terminal that we can access with the interface in which later we'll deactivate your stealth and um, you have defense here apparently. We have one defense round. Alright, so we're gonna continue. I have my XE in case we have ship scan and survey, which turns out we don't have because I recognize command. Ooh. Okay, so that's sentry. That is sentry. Sentry will usually not notice you when you enter the room until it starts to see you or something, and then it will move forward like that. And then it will usually go to the next room, like this. Sentry also has this... Oh, really now? Oh, this is something. So we're gonna time right now. An asteroid will hit an uh, unknown room. So this is something that I need to barge in quickly. Sonic is gonna be useless against Sentry because Sentry is not an organic uh, infestation. Where's the defense then? Hmm. The defense is in room 10. Room 13. The defense is in there. Because that sentry came, uh, that room 12 sentry came from room 10, and room 13 was not open before. Alright. Also, when using stealth, you will want to keep in mind how many percentage your stealth have been. If it's below 25%, your drone will start to flicker its uh, stealth. Hmm, I'm gonna put you here first then. Your drone will start to flicker and you will want to start to worry before your stealth runs out. Of charge. I have SD for my uh, quick 
quick stealth command or something so this is the fuel access fuel access will have a chance to have a one per potion fuel and one fuel access uh, I mean jump fuel Hello. Come here. You can hear the sentry uh sentry machine there. It's part of their mechanics basically. I don't check all this uh, all these rooms yet. So okay, time now shows 5:34. I might want to return now. Before Okay, so no pipe creek because it's past 5:50. But I will have to worry for the asteroid collision to hit a room soon. It's still an unknown room and it has only 10% of chance. So... Aricon is not gonna hit, even. Come here, sentry. There you are. Come here. But if I'm wrong... Then I will want to stay away from uh, room 10, room 14, room 15, and room 16 because sometimes an asteroid will have a chance to hit um, the room adjacent to its targeted room basically. So maybe what I want to do is to just park a sentry here instead it uh, so it in case it hits another room, I, I'm not going to lose the sentry. Sentry will have uh, up to one to three scraps that you can get for points. And it is indeed, it indeed doesn't hit, thankfully. I can also kill the, uh, the sentry with the overload. I'm going to demonstrate it here. Okay. So the sentry is in room 12. The sentry is in at the center of room 12, so if it dies, it's not gonna collide with the interface, uh, the terminal rather, in case it dies, because sometimes the game do be like that. It likes to put a uh, new scrap from the dead sentry at the, uh, colliding at the terminal or even, or even walls, so you want to be careful in case you're going to kill, kill your sentry this way. The terminal gets destroyed, so sentry is already dead, like this. So something about overload. Overload has a chance to uh, cause 80 to 150 hit points. Mm, sentry has. Oh, an electronic uh, usual. Uh, wait, is it electronic? Yeah, an electronic usually has something about. One hundred HP per item. So like, this terminal, if it gets overloaded, will cause one hundred HP damage, along with the generator as well. But at some occasion. The percentage of your um, overload can be lo as low as 80, so it's not gonna fully destroy the item, and instead it's going to just damage it. It's not gonna be effective against sentry, sadly. So you will have to reuse the overload once more. Turret. Okay, let me let me demonstrate to you how turret works. I 
might want to make this as good though, because um, so far we're pretty safe. I want to nap this lot to swap my drone that which is in Ireland apparently okay so okay this is the room with the drone we can just swap it uh, even with we, when we're not as near with the drone or something okay Well, this is assuming if we still have some uh, living sentries to uh, demonstrate our turret here. This is the fan. I'm going to explain about the fan at the end of the mission. Two fans even. Holy crap. But knowing a uh, eight type of ship, it can have two fans. So yeah, gotta be careful. Oh, okay. So I'm going to demonstrate it this way. Power the turret. Uh, ready your turret command, rather. Sorry. Just do it that way. And make sure not to move before the infestation dies. Gotta make sure of that. The turret will get disabled because the turret will get disabled as soon as you move, basically. I'm not gonna mind with my slowness this time because this is a tutorial mode. That is 32. Minutes long so far. It's going to be 35, I think. <laughs> and that's all, folks. Okay, so. A fan has a chance. To spawn two types of swarm. Which is not present in here, so you're not gonna see its process or something. It's kinda too bad because we have the stealth and such, so we can pretty much see how it's doing. This is the pipe creek that I'm talking about, in which it occurred in 1145. Not 655, because um, I think the there's a bit of a multiplier in that aspect or something. I, I, I'm not sure how to explain that, Jesus. So if, uh, here's the thing, if the first radiation occurred, it's meant to occur at 6.55, like the pipe creek that you just heard there, um, it will occur at that, uh, something about uh, 6 minutes. And then this is the second uh, mark, which uh, just I told you about uh, 11.48, and if you were not fast enough to get the entire ship jack you will usually tend to get screwed by this room to radiation you do not want to do that unfortunately but thankfully thanks to the second generator um i don't need to mind about this being radiated and such um what else oh yeah i was i was mentioning about swarm uh fence swarm one swarm will either spawn 10 size of swarm or 20. If you see 20, if you know that the swarm spawns 20 size of swarm in the fan, it the fan will be safe for the rest of the run. If the swarm only spawns 10 size of bug, it will it will spawn another 10. But the fan will have a bit of a cooldown after spawning the first uh, 10 size swarm in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. And then uh, the exact time of this fan to spawn will range from the next 2.30 until 10 minutes. So that's the reason why I waited so long in yesterday's challenge. Um, because I wasn't sure if the swarm at that fan spawned 10 or 20. Usually, you will know the amount of infestation that you kill 
in the ship defense room. As you might have seen previously, um, for yeah, I I I don't have the. I don't have the lock here anymore, sadly, unfortunately. Uh, it will it will have this notification basically defense in room thirteen killed x amount x amount of enemies. So if you only place a a, a, a swarm in here, you can tell if it's a twenty size swarm or ten size swarm. As long as you know which swarm that you killed you will be able to determine whether your fan will be safe for the next um, 10 minutes after its first spawn or you will still have to be cautious on that because yesterday we have sensor there is no safety to check how many uh, swarm bug that was so yeah mm. In which unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not here. And such. Mm, also, I have a bit of a. Okay, so that's. Mm, sorry. So that's pretty much from an information about the fence worm. So. So the conclusion about the fence worm is that a s the fence worm will be safe until two minutes and thirty. Of mission timer mark and then uh, this swarm will randomly spawn sometime around 2 30 until 10 minutes of mission time and it will spawn either 10 size of swarm or 20 size of swarm and you will be usually able to exactly tell from killing the swarm in the ship defense room or if you have stealth you can see uh, the amount of uh, red dots, uh, like the infestation recognition kind of thing, uh, like how many how many red uh, red boxes around that um, swarm. You won't be able to exactly tell that it's actually ten or actually twenty, but uh, if you're experienced enough, you will be able to tell if that swarm is a ten size or twenty size, basically. Yeah. Uh, basically overall experience tells in that regard because this is not a slime mission I'm not I'm unable to uh, tell about the uh, slime mechanics in general so that's that really yeah I think that's all that's all in this mission also fun fact I think mm, in challenges you will get maximum four additional drone upgrade at max and then you won't be able to uh, and then I don't think you will get another dormant drone laying around in the ship unless um, your drone slot will still not uh, is still not yet to get uh, filled with another upgrade basically so for example um, this drone only has oh interesting so NASA collision in room 22 and room 21 that's gonna hit in 22 minutes mm -hmm. oh yeah something about that I forgot to tell about the asteroid collision um, asteroid warning is divided into two types of warning the first warning ranges uh, the first warning usually occurs in two minutes in interval. Well, sometimes, not usually. Like, for example, it occurred in um, something about four minutes at the start of the mission, I think. And then suddenly, 18 minutes of mission time, it got ourselves this um, amount of uh, the asteroid warning. This is the first warning. The second warning will be a one minute countdown. And you will have to make a decision whether you want to quickly explore this room or just want to just get the hell out of the room before it hits, basically. Also, an asteroid will usually have a chance to blow open the adjacent 
at the doors leading to the adjacent room. For example, if room 21 busts open all the doors here, like the 25, 45, etc., it's gonna vacuum room 15, room 14, room 23, room 20, room 25, and room 22. And if it busts open any doors at room 22, it's gonna um vacuum room 20 and room 24 otherwise in that in the other room you will be safe except i open d48 which i'm not gonna close anymore um yeah that's out of the case basically. um yeah overall that's the case asteroid will also have a chance to only create radiation if it effectively hits the room because uh the 10 minute mark that we uh, the seven minute mark that we got uh didn't hit the derelict which is very nice uh because i wasn't done with the ship basically uh <laughs> mm. yeah it will only create radiation and it will not bust open any doors leading to the adjacent room of say hit room basically targeted room but if it's only 20 to 20 percent i don't think it's gonna hit but i'm not gonna wait longer enough for that to know i don't think and the percentage will also change um in the second warning as well for uh, but i think it's not the change of the percentage is not gonna be too significant i don't think it maybe ranges something about 10 minutes of in a percentage increase or decrease even it's possible but i have no idea or maybe you just wait for this one so you will know what i'm talking about because it's uh, it's nearing uh, 22 37 for the targeted uh, asteroid to hit see so for the second asteroid hit uh asteroid warning i'm sorry the room 22 percentage gets lowered and the room 21 gets a bit higher but usually in at this low percentage it will not hit but i've seen instances where it hits so it's not recommended to still stay around the safe room because room 21 has a lot of doors leading to the next room so yeah yeah, we're just gonna wait and uh, after this we're going to be done in this one. Oh yeah, three in three three commands in a terminal is ship scan where you can scan the power rooms. Survey where you can wait wait wait. Yeah, asteroid failed to collide, which is not happening between that say room. So uh, there are three terminal uh, three sh um, terminal commands that you will probably need to know ship scan scans all the rooms for visible scraps um visible scraps or any items actually like this includes hidden scrap which is actually quite rare sometimes in certain derelicts mm, unless you get a scan or prop module where you don't need to worry about ship scan and sometimes ship scan doesn't reveal um that's how you feel a room to be scanned like it's gonna show error scanning instead survey will show you the entire layout of your derelict it's always gonna be this uh, rectangular base kind of derelict i wish they have more variation on that something like in drone training where they have like uh four rooms but the first three room uh forms this uh, square and then the next room is the loner one look at, at the right one with no other rooms at its bottom or something so not like this rectangular thing basically yeah that's survey and defense powers the defense the ship defense only one of these apparently hmm I see okay 
something that you need to be mindful with the ship defense is that you will have to deactivate the defense after you use it because it will it will be able to kill your drone if you forget to shut off the uh, the ship defense that happened to me a lot in the past and with Dano and other people believe me it happened <laughs> It tends to happen, so you will have to know um, if your ship defense have been active is still active or not, because um, uh, this can be toggled like uh, type defense for activating the defense, and then the other defense uh, command will deactivate the defense. Basically, you will you will be able to tell from the console or something. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. This mission is thankfully easy enough for me to explain and I don't have to uh, to struggle too much on that. Oh yeah, also, one more time, uh, sorry, I don't, I don't need to exit. Stealth will have a cooldown after you deactivate it. That's something about 3 seconds or something. Okay, let me, let me, let me count. Okay, that's about two seconds. Stealth test. Oh god. That's another random chance of uh, asteroid. Uh, I mean, pipers. And then where is it going to hit? Yeah, just be mindful with this stealth cooldown because if you're not aware. You can pretty much get screwed from there. All right. Um. Hmm. Oh yeah. Let's check the gather list. We get 19 scrap, which is most of them. Which most of them is from the Sentry, or Purple Bot. You can call it what, whatever you want. We get one propulsion fuel from the fuel access and one jump fuel, and one there like will always have one fuel access and one vent. Yeah, yeah, it will it will always have that. Mm, it will of course they will always have the generator of or else where else would you be able to explore <laughs> the entirety of the ship? At some cases they will not have an uh, the interface or terminal rather to activate the ship defense it, it, which is really really a flow a very flow uh there like sign there so yeah that's a paper that i didn't drop actually wait what, what else what else what else yeah so that's the gear list and then we exit usually i would just type exit but i have this for a reason to date my mission time here along with the gather list and then yeah basically exiting like that so this is this final score one scrap will guarantee you to have 20 points so that's a lot so make it count in case you have to kill the sentry fire radiation in which there is also the steam guide for that as well and which i think i'm going to also link in the description so you don't have to uh, browse around the uh, Uh, the steam or something. B fuel will always grant you five points of uh, well, the, the B fuel. It, it will always um, one B fuel and one jump fuel for the maximum in this uh, kind of uh, daily challenge. Mm, in in fuel uh, fuel station uh, wait fuel depot sorry fuel depot space station they will usually. Uh, they will they will sometimes hold two of each like 2p fuel two jump fuel or the other the other kind like 2p fuel zero jump fuel eh, it ugh, sorry it varies could be only one p fuel but two jump fuels that's nice all right so drone hp drone hp is the accumulation between nathan's aaron's and orson we didn't take any damage so this is 240 when being added and this 340 and they will only have uh, 
they don't get multiplied. Uh, drones. Drones count from the Dormant drones uh, as well that we got there. I'm going to just uh, exit my mission time because... Oh, wait a second. Sorry, sorry. Um, okay. There you go. Okay. Anyways. Alright, so the drone... First drone is here, second drone, third, and fourth. And all the drones have to be in the docking bay. Or else if it's... Well, for example, if in case it still it still gets stuck in A, gets stuck in A2, then your drones will not count, with, which will suck. And you will lose all the upgrades as well in that side drone so yeah all nine drone upgrades for the maximum in this uh, kind of daily challenge usually as far as i'm aware and um, no toggle ship upgrade usually there will be a toggle ship upgrade that you can tell when you info when you type info for a room like whether it's toggle or not you can tell that from the uh, console so always check your console for that destroy it Ship upgrade cannot be towed, uh, but it can be transported to your room one when you exit the mission with an active transport signal in the two. If it's not active, that then you cannot get a point from that. So yeah, ship upgrade also qu has quite a big uh, uh, plus there. So yeah, so total score is all the above added. Thank you for watching. <laughs> That's like a lot of time. Yeah, usually I will be kind of behind LB or even in front of uh, beating LB's time even. But at least this mission is simple enough for me to explain. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for listening to all my rambles. I'm going to finish this recording in... 52, 52 for no reason mm, yeah so as I mentioned I'm going to link uh, the important guides to radiated sentry because radiating the sentry in the daily challenge tends to be a bit of a plus uh, for your points as long as you kill it in the room um, that's nearby the reachable doorway that you can access it to basically like that uh yeah basically see you on the next challenge maybe if tomorrow's challenge will have a different uh, investigation i will be able to tell like the leaper or something because i never tell something about the leaper so yeah toodles enjoy the rest of your day